Hello and welcome to another session of Scratch. Uh, today we are learning about some custom blocks and parameters. We'll be starting a new project, so I hope you're excited for that. I'll give you a preview of what that looks like and we'll get to work on it. But first, these are some things you should have already learned. We did the Pong game previously. So you should have learned position, direction, events, loops, conditionals, sensing, collisions, key pressing, sprites, backgrounds, and stuff all. You should have learned all these things already. Um, but I want to recap one, because that's what we're going to use today, which is the position. So in Scratch, you have a positional chart, basically. The area in which your game takes place takes place in a square this size. And if you know about graphing on a chart, you'll know that the center is often 0, 0. And on the x-axis, um, there are 240 uh, positions along the x-axis uh, for the negative, and there's a positive 240. On the y-axis, it goes to a positive 180 and a negative 180. So if I have something over here where the 100 is, it is at 100 x 0 y. And if I move it up to here, my x-coordinates are 100 x 100 y. So as it gets bigger in the x-coordinate, it moves this way, and the bigger y-coordinate, it will move this way. Likewise, if it gets smaller on the x-coordinate, it will move towards the left all the way up to negative 240. And if it gets smaller on the y-coordinate, it will move downwards uh, towards negative 180. So that's the x-y position, something to keep in mind as we work today, because we will be using both planes, the x-plane, which is left and right, and the y-plane, which is up and down. So our goals today, we're going to start with creating a custom sprite, something you should know how to do. We're going to make a sprite movable in four directions, both x left and right and y up and down. Um, we are also going to create a custom block. This is the new part for you. And then we will learn how to pass parameters into that custom block. So that will also be new. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to show you is how this is going to look or close to looking here uh, in the near future. You're going to have a game like this where you will move around and actually uh, shoot different incoming aircraft or whatever you like. You don't have to use aircraft. But it's going to look something like this, which will be very cool. It will keep score, as you can see, up at the top. Uh, it'll keep track of the number of kills, the number of shots that I've fired, all that good stuff. Um, but it will move in all four directions. As you can see, this moves up and down, left, right, and diagonally if I hold both down. It also fires, and you'll learn the firing part next time. Uh, but today we're going to try and get the motion down. So that's what the end result is going to look like. A um, couple of other things to note. I have added the lessons onto Haiku. You can see them here. Um, the only one uh, that was written by me is the one in English, so uh, I don't take responsibility for the other ones. Those are all done by Google Translate, which you could have done yourself. I've just done that for you. So if you want to look at it in another language, it's there for you. I've worked really hard to make these translations better um, by using simpler English, so hopefully the translations will work better. Uh, so they are there. Let's get on to Scratch and what we were doing. If you remember, our first goal was to create a custom sprite. Now this is something you've done. It's fairly easy to do. Down here in the lower area we have a paintbrush and all you do is click on it and you can create a custom sprite. Um, for spaceships uh, they're mostly square at the bottom typically. Um, I've seen students import pictures of the planes but for today I'm just going to draw one. I'm going to choose a gray spaceship like you saw in the demonstration. Oops, except it's not going to be like that, it needs to be uh, filled in on the inside. So I'll fill it in. You can see that even I make errors. And there we go. So I have my square. But as you know, a spaceship is not a square. It is typically angular. So I'll just quickly create a custom sprite. And you can do the same process if you want to use something similar to mine or not. It's all up to you. But I basically just do that real quick. And actually, when I'm feeling like it, I sometimes add a window in here by adding in a window. So that's where my pilot lives. So I've made the image, and as we know, if you have an image, center it up as best you can. The pilot window looks about right. And there we go. You can see my ship over on the left. 
the next thing we need to do is we need to add the ability to move to it. You'll notice mine is auto saving. One of the things I encourage you to do is when you go home, um, there's an option up here that will say join now and you can join it and sign in so that it saves all your work and it will do things like this. It will auto save. And then next time you come to class, you can just load it up by logging in. You don't have to download and upload and all that stuff that we do in class. So side note, great recommendation. If you can, save your work, create an account, but do it with a parent. It's a legal requirement I have here in Germany. So first thing we need to do, of course, is we always need to start off with an event. In this case, it'll be when the flag is clicked. And because it's the motion, we will use the forever tag. We want to know that this works out forever. So let's start out with the motion of up. We need to use the key pressed. This is stuff you should already know. Up, we use the up arrow. Um, and we can tell it to change the Y direction. This is something, again, we already did inside of our Pong project. We can duplicate this and use the down arrow and change the Y by negative 10. Again, going back to our positions, if you remember, up is positive, and you can see the number down in the bottom right of this, this little white box goes up, and if I go down, it goes down towards the negative section. So positive 10 goes up, negative 10 goes down. We still need to do left and right, which is new, but we can do the same pattern, which is the if key press is left, it should move towards the left, and that is the x direction. Before we used y, you need to be careful. This is now the x direction, because it goes left and right and left would be towards the negative side. Hopefully you realize that. And we can duplicate this block, change it to right, and if it's going right, it is moving towards the positive x, as you can see down there. And there you go. So now we have one that should be allowed to move in all directions, and it does. So this is pretty good. However, if we want to change it right now, say we want to slow it down to five, we have to go change this in four different locations. And so this is really one of the features that we'll get uh, to noticing with the custom blocks. Um, but the other one is, is once we start adding things like shooting and those kinds of things, this is going to become a very, very busy forever loop. And one of the ways we can get around that is by creating a custom block. So over here in the more blocks, we have the ability to make our own blocks. And this is a very cool feature because it lets us do some things that we couldn't do or didn't do in the Pong game. So I'm gonna start off by creating a block and I'm gonna call it ship movement. It doesn't really matter what I call it, but because that's what it's going to do, I'm gonna call it ship movement. And you'll notice it gives us this thing that says define ship movement. Well, what do you want the ship movement to be? Well, I wanna see if any of these are pressed to do that movement. And that's all I want it to do. And if I put that ship movement, it now knows to, hey, if it hits ship movement, go check out my custom block here. And it will go through these commands to see if these are happening. And it certainly does so. So that's cool. One, it lets us keep this loop really, really clean. Um, so that we know that this is just ship movement. We can kind of actually even forget about this um, and kind of drag it off to the side where we don't need to see it because we know what it is just by the description that we gave it. Um, but there's even cooler features to ship movement. Remember before we had to change each one of these individually? Well, with a custom block, we can actually make it so that we only have to change that once. And the way we do that is by adding something called a parameter. So the way we do that is we right click our block, our block and we go to edit. And this will bring up the window that you saw earlier where we entered the ship movement. But there is something called an option at the bottom. And this option has a bunch of parameters we can add. We can add a number, we can add a string, we can add a Boolean, that's a true or false, or we can add uh, some text. Um, you'll notice that all of these are numbers. So what this is going to do, we're going to add a number. 
something that's going to call it number one. Sure, why not? And you'll notice that now there's this number one block. And what this does is it takes whatever number we type over here and passes it to this number one bubble. You'll notice this bubble is the same shape as the direction and x position and things that we used before because we can drag it from here to there. So now I'm going to replace the 5 here and I'm going to replace the 5 there. And you'll see that it still works. So what's happening is that it says, hey, move the ship 5. And when it goes through this process, it says, well, change it by whatever this number is. This number is looking up this one over here. So in a way, we're kind of telling it to look up a number and to pass that in. Well, this is really good because if we want to change it in two areas, we now only have to change it in one location, and it changes the up and the right. It moves really fast. But what about our other section, our down and our key press? Well, we can't really use that because it's passing in a positive 10. And if we do that, then when I press the down arrow or the left arrow, it doesn't go the direction it should. Instead of uh, going left or down, it goes up and right, because when it looks at this, it says if the down arrow is pressed, change Y by a positive 10, which is moving up. And if the left arrow is pressed, change it by a positive number, which is going to the right instead of left. So we need to add a negative. And the way we do that is by using something called an operator. So as I was saying, um, the way we do that is by using something called an operator. Uh, if you've done some mathematics, you know that any number times negative 1 equals the opposite of that number. So if I have 5 and I multiply it by negative 1, I now have negative 5. If I have 10 and I multiply it by negative 1, I have negative 10. So uh, right now we're only passing in a positive 10, but in order to move down on the y-axis, we need that number to be to change y by a negative. So we need to multiply this number by a negative 1. And that's really simple. We just need to use this thing called an operator. And we have four different mathematical ones here. We have plus, minus, multiply, and divide. These are the computer shapes for those. So if I take my 10, that is the down arrow being passed in, which now moves the ship up, and I multiply that by negative 1, I should get a negative number. So multiply by negative 1. And that would be the same thing that I would do for the left arrow, because left is negative on the x-axis. So we need to turn the number that we pass in to a negative. And now, if I press down or left, you'll notice it moves back in that direction. And now, the great thing about this parameter is there's only one number that ever, ever needs to be changed, and that's the ship movement number. If I want it to move really fast, I change this to 20, and it passes it in here, and all of these are equal to 20. So this is change y by positive 20, change y by 20 times negative 1, which is a total of negative 20, so change y by negative 20, change left by negative 20, and change right x by negative 20, or positive 20, excuse me. And now if I hit it, you'll notice it moves a lot faster. And if I change it to something like 3, you'll notice it moves a lot slower. So this allows us to uh, change how the ship behaves really, really easily. And we can easily use this to make it so that if the ship gets hit, it speeds up, or it gets a power up, it speeds up, or if it gets hit, it slows down, all of those kinds of things, because we only need to change it in one location now. So that's today's lesson. Uh, if you've finished... The things that I would recommend is start drawing your weapon and start drawing what the enemy looks like. Um, so what kind of enemies are you going to be shooting down? And there's uh, a couple different things you can do with that. Um, so yeah, so that's the lesson for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you understand how to make a custom block. I hope you understand what a parameter is. It's a number that we can pass in to a custom block. Not necessarily a number. It could be text. It could be a yes or no. It could be all of those things. But a parameter is something that we pass into 
the block. Um, I also recommend you go read the document just so that you get a little bit of extra knowledge on this whole thing. All right, happy coding.